of the ID, on the ID. We have waited long enough. Then the authentic Jew will say there is no such thing. He will say it may be absurd because it doesn't make sense that you keep on waiting, waiting, waiting and nothing is happening. It is a little irrational. It is a little abnormal to believe in this because how long can you wait and you still somehow believe that this really is going to happen? The Jew basically never gave up on this belief, on this irrational belief. Even the secular Jew didn't. Because even the secular Jew in 1948, when the state of Israel was established, was working with this concept. He had secularized it. And he said, perhaps I have to go myself. If the Messiah doesn't come, if the Mashiach doesn't come, then we'll do it ourselves. But we won't assimilate. We won't give up on our identity. We will be redeemed. That's Keula, redemption. But it doesn't make sense. Here, well, when the Roman looks to this fact about Jews, when the Roman Empire, when Western civilization looks to the Jew and he sees this Jew waiting, 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 and waiting for this redemption and it's not happening, then at a certain moment, the Western world will say, this is not just irrational, this is foolish. It doesn't fit within our system of understanding what history is. There's nowhere else in the world where a nation keeps on waiting, 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 and it does not happen. It breaks down, and you forget about it, and you say, we made a mistake, or our grandparents made a mistake when they believed in these things. Childish, primitive. The Roman doesn't know what to do about redemption. He doesn't understand the Jewish mentality that he keeps on believing in this. That, by the way, was one of the reasons, and I will come back later to it, that when Zionism ultimately brought about the state of Israel, a majority of the greatest of people in the world were deeply upset because it didn't fit into their system. It couldn't be done by the rules of the game, by the rules of history. And then you look on the other side, the Galut, exile. That is just as strange. Here is a nation which was thrown out of its country nearly 2,000 years ago, lived for nearly 2,000 years in exile, and we have had loads of exiles, and we had more time outside Israel than we ever had inside Israel. And we did not disintegrate. We did not disappear from the globe of the world. We were small. The non-Jewish anti-Semitic world often kept us small by killing us off left and right. We stayed a very small community. And there is an incredible surprise between historians till this very day because they are saying, how did the Jew survive as a minority, constantly be discriminated against? constantly be killed off by pogroms, inquisition, holocausts, and so on, and they still survive. In fact, not only that they survive, but they have been surviving everybody else. The Romans are no longer around, and the Jew is still there. The Persians are no longer there, the Jew is still around. Strangely enough, all the people stood up against us, disappeared from the globe of this world. With one exception, the Germans. But that's our history. A Roman Empire, which was indeed the greatest empire we have ever seen, with an unbelievable amount of power and energy. If you would have lived a few thousand years ago in Israel when the Romans walked into the country, and you would have asked somebody, tell me, who do you think will still be around in another thousand years? In another 2,000 years, then nobody would say, the Jews. The Jews did not have a proper army. They did not have the finances. Jews don't like to fight. There is no concept of hero within the Jewish world. There are people of the book. There are the people of the spirit. They can't stand up against a Roman army. 
And we just read about the Hanukkah story where you see how difficult it was. So how can it be that they outlived the Romans? How can it be that they outlived the, the Greeks? How can it be that they outlived the Babylonians and all these other people who stood up against us? While you are living in exile as a minority, discriminated against? Why did the Jew not assimilate? Why did he not disintegrate? Why did he not disappear? Why do we say this? And here the Romans are again speaking, Western civilization is again speaking, and saying one thing. Look around what happened to all the other nations in the world. Many nations left their countries or were pushed out. All of them disappeared within three, four hundred years. There's not one around anymore, except for the Jews. And you know what that means? It irritates. It irritates tremendously because these Jews are doing things here which don't make sense. They keep believing in the impossible, that they're going to be redeemed. And on top of that, they keep on surviving when by the laws of nature or better by the laws of history, there is no way how you can survive under those circumstances. It is against, is a violation of the laws of history. Have you heard about Arnold Toynbee? One of the most famous historians who protested against the state of Israel in 1948 when Ben-Gurion established it because he says this is absolutely out of all proportion and ridiculous that we allow a nation to go back 2000 years later to their homeland. What would be if we will allow all the other nations to do the same thing? We would have to reorder the whole map of the world. And the answer obviously is, no you don't, you know why? Because everybody else is gone. But the Jew is still there. And Toynbee, who was no doubt a great scholar, was at the same time becoming, because of that reason, irritated by the Jews. In fact, he becomes anti-Semitic in one of his works. Somebody once said, the Jew once said this, the strange things about the Jew is that he's constantly dying and he never is dead. And it's probably true even till this very day. We are this very little country in Israel, which you nearly can't see on the map of the world. And we have an enormous amount of enemies around us. And you would say to yourself, there's no way how you can hold out under those conditions. And somehow, again, the state of Israel is representing a force taking place among the Jews which is very difficult for the world to deal with because it does not make sense. And when things don't make sense, they irritate. I once said to my students, if you want a definition of Jews, one of them, there are many, but one of them is this. The Jews are the most irritating people in the world. Because if you keep on doing things which nobody else is allowed to do or can do, you keep on surviving, you keep on believing in things when that doesn't make any sense at all, and you constantly see, which is exactly what is happening at this hour as well, and that is that the whole world is busy with this very little country, which is so small that you can't even see it on a world map. Israel is incredibly small. And everybody is busy with us. That irritates even more. What sometimes the anti-Semitic world does not understand is that by all the irritation which they constantly express, sometimes in the media and other ways, they only prove once more how different Jews are from the rest of the population of the world. Which doesn't mean to say we should walk around just like that. But we have to try to understand what that means and why that is. We can't get around it. We may not even like it ourselves. Many Jews would say, oh, please let us just, uh, you know, go by the rules of the game and by the rules of history. And if we have to disappear, we'll disappear. But somehow something is happening with us 
that even when we want 